Hi, this is Ahmed from Integral Audio. Our channel is focused on audio and music production. Please subscribe if you're interested in this sort of content and don't forget to check our website for in-depth reviews. In this video, we will take a look at a noise reduction plugin by Tone Lip. This is one of the best free noise reduction tools that are easy to use and offer great functionality. Let's take a look at its interface and design. So this is a noise gate consisting of two units. There is the studio rack and then there is the easy gate which is based on the noise gate guitar pedal. The studio rack or the main rack offers more options to control how the plugin monitors and responds to the input signal. There are four control knobs which are depth, attack, hold and decay. Then there's this auto mode and if I turn this on it's it's going to disable all these knobs and only leave me with this threshold slider and then there's this bypass and then there's the second part of this which is the easy gate and if I turn this on it's only going to be one or the other I can't use both of them at the same time so now this one is bypassed and this one is active it has a sensitivity knob and this button which goes back and forth between hard and soft and uh, if I just leave it at hard it's gonna make this pedal more or this uh, plugin more sensitive now so without any further ado, let's take a listen to the examples and see how we could benefit from this amazing tool. I recorded this drum loop from a real kit and I intentionally increased the microphone gain to introduce the static noise that you hear on it. Let's see now if we can clean things up. I will start by experimenting with the auto mode in here, and this will simplify this whole process and only allow me to clean the signal using just this one threshold slider. When you put auto mode on, it will analyze the input signal and adjust every other control parameter on your behalf using the algorithm. All you will have to do is just adjust the threshold to an appropriate level. Let's see what we could do with it. So already just moving this slider it was just an easy process and not much tweaking is going on and I feel like once I started approaching the uh, the level at 85 it already sounded really nice and now I'm gonna be listening to it again with and without so you could be really hearing the difference. This is me talking through FL Studio now, no signal processing yet, this is dry. I'll apply noise reducer to see how well it could handle the noises in the background such as my fan, my mouse clicks and like my keyboard for instance. I'll start by increasing the threshold just a little bit and um, I'd really like to know what's the uh, basic threshold that's going to be able to treat my surrounding environment through this spectrum analyzer. So the yellow curves uh, represent the output. So once that, like when I'm not talking and there's no output, then I know, th okay, th so this is the base um, below which I can't go. Hey. There's still some residue noise in my, um, in my voice when I'm speaking. But when I'm not speaking, there's nothing there, so... So maybe I could try to make the decay to like 20 milliseconds. Increase the depth just a little bit. Maybe like 72. We have 100 actually. And yeah, so... I'll maybe set the threshold to 70 as well. So this is with and without noise reducer. Hey, hey, okay, um, so one more thing is I'm going to try to make some noises like scratching my microphone grill, like this. I 
and notice how the um, the output decreases and there's a difference between the input and the output like this so that's how much suppression is going on there is something I noticed which is the presets there are no presets or noise profiles attached with it however you could make your own presets and name them and save them so if I just make any changes to so this default setting it's going to enable this one and then I could save them um, on my computer so I can just use them anytime I want to use them and of course presets wouldn't be perfect because each recording would be unique and different with different types of noise and just different conditions all around but I still think that presets would make a great starting point which then could be tweaked to match the present recording and uh, treat it consequently but this plugin is too simple and it's easy to use anyway so making your own presets shouldn't be um, too hard anyway So let's have a look at this vocal sample now. It has some noise coming from an air conditioning in the background. I'll continue on my own growing slowly. Now I found myself within. So one of the things I like to do is I'll find a portion with noises only playing and then I'll set the threshold to just about right and then I'll listen back to see if it adversely affects the vocal itself. Okay, now let's take a listen. I'll continue on my own growing slowly. Now I found myself within. It sounds okay, but there's still some noise like a tail after every phrase that he finishes. You may want to set the threshold to be more aggressive, but you got to be careful because it may adversely affect the vocal itself in the sense that if some words or sounds are quiet, it may filter them out and create breakups in the singing. That's why in such a process you could benefit from using EQ to identify the exact frequencies where the noise occurs and attenuate them as much as possible. Compressors or multiband compressors may be of use as well. You could also use more noise reducers after this one and not have just one plug and do all the work. It's generally a good rule to follow in most scenarios. So, in conclusion, there are some areas where this noise reducer from TuneLib excels and there are other areas where it could be used as a co-processor in your chain. If you want a noise gate for your instruments, especially acoustic or clean sounding electric guitars, then this will be a very good choice because it doesn't really take much CPU. But for podcasts or content where everything has to be pristine and quiet and clean, it could be used as a part of your processing chain because, as we heard, it doesn't do much to the actual noise that's present during the speeches or talking voices. And, of course, you can't use that when it comes to restoring audios that were recorded in very noisy environments. And that brings us to the end of this video. 
I hope you found any helpful insights in it. And if so, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And until then, thank you.